Hi, welcome to another video. This is Battery Management System Part 7. This video is going to concentrate on what you have to do to get rid of these resistors. Now, someone called Jonathan mentioned in one of the comments, I could use a FET transistor in the linear ohmic region. I've already done a video on that. Check back through some of my old videos. So you take this resistor off, you short out the battery through this FET transistor, and you control the gate. You don't fully switch this FET on. So in the ohmic or linear region, not turning the FET fully on, you can pass a certain amount of current, or however much current you like. The only criteria is you've got to keep the thing cool. This one isn't meant to dissipate much heat, so it hasn't got a large copper area. So you might ask, well why is this truck so thick? If you looked at some of my amp repairs, if you've got a large resistor getting hot, it's going to burn the joint underneath, unless you get rid of the heat with a large truck. So this isn't to cool the FET, but it does keep it cool, is to cool this pad under here, or something the KEF designers didn't do. So to demonstrate the FET in the ohmic linear region, I've had to cut with a blade, cut through here, cut through here, cut everything underneath, and these JLC PCBs, the copper is solid, took me half an hour to clear the ground from this source. I've got two demonstrations set up. A simple potentiometer which will mimic you controlling a voltage to the FET via some transistor or chip and its downfalls. There we go, hopefully you can see that. That's the butchered ground here. I had to cut all the way down through here across the back because I had veers just to take away some of the heat. So butchered on top and butchered underneath taken out the resistor, I've now got the positive from this cell going through my fluke meter back to the drain of the FET, then from the drain of the FET goes to a small 0.1 ohm resistor then to ground. This doesn't have to have this resistor but you'll see why I've got it there. This isn't going to be dissipating much energy, the FET's going to be doing all the work. So I've got this 10 turn potentiometer it's currently wired to 5 volts. 1k on the wiper to the gate of the FET. 10 turns so I can put from 0 to 5 volts on the gate of this FET. I'll show you the current, hopefully the scope signal on the gate and I'll put a little timer there too. So simplistically if you are not turning the FET fully on, the on resistance is high which means this will dissipate power and it will heat up. So how quickly does it heat up? Well that depends how much current you're passing. Let me set it all up and we'll turn it on. Well here's a quick look at the current schematic. So 5 volts across a 10 turn potentiometer I just turn the pot up a bit, 1k to the gate of this FET, next area, that's the model number. Got a 3 amp fuse on the battery, there's the fuse. It's a 3 amp fuse to protect the equipment and the battery and the PCB. This is the second time filming this part of the video. Just editing the video, the scope and the meter had a soft focus. Someone did ask once, why don't I get an autofocus camera? This Sony camera is 4K video in artificial lighting, zoomed in on autofocus. The focus can sometimes shift. Most of my videos are set to manual focus so that it can't adjust itself. So I forgot what I've said previously, and I forgot what I've said subsequently. I will use this potentiometer here, 10 turn, it's so worth to 5 volts, 1k to the gate of this FET. We'll turn it up to a couple of hundred milliamps, and we'll see what the current does versus time and gate voltage. You don't need to see me turning this pot up, so again I'll zoom in here. Right, so everything's in focus. You've got to watch the gate voltage and the current. I'll turn the potentiometer up now. The threshold is round about 3.5 volts. You 
you see the gate coming up not conducting anything at the moment this 2 milliamps is a problem with this meter 1.7 volts remember this is the linear ohmic region we are not turning the FET fully on right, 3 volts we'll start to see something here there we go look so 3.37 we've got 5, 6 milliamps so it's very precise so I'll leave it there for a second so they call it the linear region so we've got, if we call it 10 milliamps if we doubled the voltage between the source and drain it would double the current so it's nearly linear right I'm going to wind it up to 200 milliamps there we go, right, I'll leave it there. Hands off. I'll just let go of the pot and it shorted the whole lot out. So again, I'm going to wind this up to 200 milliamps. Watch the gate voltage. I'll leave it there, I'll let go of the pot without shorting anything out. Constant gate voltage, 3.75. Watch the current creeping up slowly. Watch the time. If I reset this, I can't. Same gate voltage. This is now soaring. If I cool the FET, lick my finger and touch the FET you'll see the current comes right down now I set this to 250 milliamps roughly that's climbing fast in a minute that's going to blow up there we go well, I'm gonna, it's over an amp I know the FET will be very hot so turned everything down so that's what's called thermal runaway and because this is take two on a video I'm not sure what I said earlier or later thermal runaway this FET has got a negative temperature coefficient as the temperature rises its on resistance or transconductance reduces it passes more current and gets even hotter and the cycle continues until something blows up or the transistor gets so hot it melts the solder But it still took me hours rigging up this and having it in such a way I can disconnect it, put the pot straight to the FET, disconnect a couple of leads and add this little operational amplifier. So what will that do? So here's a drawing I prepared earlier. The potentiometer is now connected to 2.5 volts. I've got a resistor divider. 1K still, but that's now going into the non-inverting input of an op-amp. That op-amp feeds the gate through a 100 ohm resistor. There's the drain and there's the source through that 0.1 ohm resistor. Now as that starts passing current we'll get a tiny voltage here dropped across this resistor. The voltage will be proportional to the current. If we set say 3.7 volts here we'll get an output to the gate. This will turn on, pass the current and we'll get feedback there. If the FET starts heating up and passing more current, we'll get more voltage here through this 1K through the inverting input. Inverting means it's going to invert the signal if this goes higher than a non-inverting. So since you already know, when this heats up, it passes more current. So this op-amp is going to see more voltage here 
and it's going to bring this output down to keep the input the same as the initial setting. Simple. 1K resistors here to protect the inputs of the op amp. I think these should be 10K, but I had 1K floating around. 100 nanofarad on the output to stop it oscillating. Uh, and so now, John B, 41122, this is a mini electronic load. We've got a small current already. It's actually noise. If I grab one of these wires, you can see it comes down just by grabbing a wire on a potentiometer. I'm sure it'll be fine on a PCB. Right, so it's currently at 3.37 volts with that potentiometer all the way down. We don't need a timer, so I'll turn up this potentiometer. So where was it? 3.5-ish. So although it's a 10 turn potentiometer, it's actually quite sensitive. I think one turn to get to one amp. 3.5 volts, 24 milliamps. So let's go up to 200. Let's go up to 250 milliamps. And that's where it starts heating. Or the PCB can't dissipate the heat at 250 milliamps. Right, 250 milliamps, 3.74 volts. I'm not going to touch anything. The voltage has already come down, 3.72. The op amp is bringing the gate voltage down, maintaining our current. You've got to hand it to operational amplifiers. They are magnificent. I haven't had to do anything. No hands. Two fifty, three point seven. So if I now lick my finger and touch the FET, my wet finger will cool the FET down, which means the current passing will reduce. So the op amp should bring this voltage up. In fact, you can see it's still coming down. So I'm going to now lick my finger and cool the FET. And you can see the voltage started coming up. I was able to keep my finger on it at this current. At half an amp, I'd keep my finger on it for about 2-3 seconds. This is hot. But don't forget, I've cut all the copper away from the source. Right, so let's turn up to 500. So now it's going to start getting hot. Let's see if I can set it exactly 500. That will do. 501 milliamps, 3.74 volts on the gate. We know this is going to come down, controlled by the op amp. Look at the current, rock steady. 3.69 already. So this design, just a few resistors laying around, an op amp laying around. See the voltage down to 3.66. Right, I'll cool this transistor again with my finger. And I can't keep my finger on that transistor for more than a second. Yowch. So you saw the current did not change, not one milliamp, you saw the gate voltage being controlled by the op amp. Yeah, those op amps are like 50 pence. Marvellous. So 
So the final test, I'll put it up at 1 amp. And I know this poor little fet, with no copper surrounding it, will be cooking. There we are, there's an amp. 3.7 volts. Look, it's coming down rapidly, look. I'm trying to cool it with my finger. That's red hot. One amp, rock steady. So before this solder melts, I'm going to turn this down. I know around about 200 milliamps the PCB and ambient condition, the ambient temperature can keep that transistor cool at 200 milliamps. So there's another look. So this circuit, it's a mini electronic load, adjustable. Not only does it control the current, it's a temperature sensor as well. As this heats up and cools down, the current changes and so this responds by altering the voltage. So talking of temperature sensors, the only thing I haven't mentioned in all my previous videos, you have to check the temperature of your cells, specifically the smaller ones if you're charging fast or discharging fast. So that's why my boards have the serial data and serial clock, 5 volts and ground, to add a temperature sensor. You get the chip, stick it to the side of the chip. That's what that's for. So I've already thought of temperature. This resistor idea was fine, but I do think they're a bit amateurish. What I have been messing about with all day, you've seen this coil before on the active cell balancing video. I've been using this coil with a different booster and all I can get is sort of one or two watts. Then I had a great idea. Discharge the cell, which is what I've been doing, and charge a nickel metal hydride. That will run the microcontroller. But you're only discharging the cell a few watts for a few minutes. So is it really worth it? I don't think it is. But that's another idea. Look for this cell. The more expensive boosters start costing five, six, seven pound each, not one pound each. If you really want active cell balancing, have a look at this coil and different chips that can pass more current. I think you'll agree using FET in the linear region is more professional than a resistor. And some of you may be thinking, why didn't I use these resistors? You can get these resistor packages, sort of 3 ohms, a few watts, carbon based or metal film, but these you cannot get rid of the heat fast enough if you pass lots of current. So this has been a look at my revised design for discharging overcharged cells and showing you an example of what thermal runaway is you saw happening earlier. If you're messing about with high currents, protect the circuit, protect your equipment, put a fuse in. So negative temperature coefficients, electronic loads and battery discharge circuits. Hopefully you've learned something or hopefully you found this video enjoyable. Thanks for watching.